social distancing. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, does that uh, my group see? Yeah, I don't have to unmute myself. <laughs> yeah. Um, good thing. Sophie, how's um how's it? Uh, does this count feel different, bearing in mind what could be achieved at the end of it? No, it's not different. I think we've just focused it. It's game nine and game ten. It's the same as any other game. Um, obviously, potentially there's more at risk, but we're just focusing on game nine first, which is Greece. So. Is it nice to have a manager who's very pragmatic and who? I mean, that will be exactly the message. Ignore all the hyperbole in the journalists, from the journalists and the press conference <laughs> and just focus on the two games. Yeah, I think it has to come from the top. I think if Gemma relays that to us, then that's the way we're going to deal with it and that's good for us players. I think you can't think too far ahead in football. I know it's, we all say it as footballers, but it's true. We have to focus on this first game, get the result we need, and then we, we look towards Slovenia. Obviously, the result you need is four points. Would it be dangerous to target four points as opposed to aiming, obviously, to win both games? No, we're going out to win both games. I think if you undersell yourself and play for a draw, then that's a risky risky game to play. How, what are you expecting from Greece? Obviously, perhaps going to be a different test for you out there than it was here when the weather was not very Greek, let's say. Yeah, obviously the weather to start with, like you said. Um, here it was a terrible, <laughs> terrible evening, wasn't it? Um, but no, obviously, um, I don't think it's going to be too hot from what, what we've seen. It's a grass pitch. Um, they're going to be hard to beat. They're going to block up like they did at home. But we have to just move the ball and focus on our own game plan and you know try and link up, play out wide probably, and get crosses into the box if they are going to be in a low block. And this feels like something this team have been very good at in recent years is going to these hard away games sticking to the plan, grinding out the result you need. Yeah, that's the most important thing, sticking to our game plan that we've been working on since Monday um, here at the Vale. And it's just about believing that we can go out and get that result as well. We know it's going to be tough. These teams are probably the harder teams to play against because they put all 11 players behind the ball and we have to move it quick. So it's, it's more for us that we have to keep that intensity high. And obviously, you know that after the Greece game, you're coming to what could be, in so many ways, a, a really special night for the team in, in Cardiff. Yeah, hopefully. it's It'll be nice to be back at Cardiff. And obviously, we've sold many, many tickets, which will be a great atmosphere. But again, we have to get the result first um, on Friday night. Is it a little bittersweet for you as sort of looking back now, the Euros? Because obviously, the effect it's going to hopefully have on the women's game is a huge positive. But I guess with the captain of Wales, her teammates, you know, playing and I, I know you went to a lot of the games must have been sort of a bit difficult in some ways. Yeah, I think you kind of process it when you first, you know, don't make the, the qualif qualification and I process, processed it months before the Euros. So when the Euros came about, it was me being a fan and supporting my Chelsea teammates and, you know, watching the teams that we had played against in the previous campaign and seeing, you know, we were quite close against some of those teams in our qualification. So. There's no reason why we can't get to a World Cup, why we can't get to a European Championship and go on and do really well there. So it's it's more about us aiming higher now than the previous campaigns. I was going to ask you in a second about a couple of your teammates. Just one first on a subject I know you hate talking about, which is Sophie Ingle. But it's been a big year for you personally, obviously. Reaching a World Cup would probably cap off what has been personally for you a, a really significant and big year with, with what you've got up to this summer? Yeah, I think being successful with Wales is, you know, my main priority. Obviously, I've, I've done well at club and I'm at a really good club, luckily. Um, but yeah, for Wales, it, it's just a different feeling. You're representing, you know, like I always say, our beautiful country. I love coming back here, being around the girls, being around the staff, being around our media team. It, it, it's a great environment to be in. and. I would love to be successful with them and yeah, get to a World Cup. And if you do get to a World Cup, obviously you'd be looking back at the year where you got married and <laughs> reached a World Cup all in the same year. That would be pretty, pretty spectacular. Yeah, it would be crazy to think that. Um, but again, we've just got to focus on Friday and hopefully get the result first, go on to Tuesday and then hopefully playoffs. And obviously, if they play in both games and it's not a given that they will but you have two teammates hitting big milestones we come to hopefully the latest member of the 100 club and Harrod in a second but Rhiannon could go to 50 caps every player I've spoken to this week about Rhiannon the word seems to be banded about always seems to be underrated and what a key player she has been for, for this team yeah you know what my mum always says that after every game as well she said that Rhiannon she's had a great game um, and she doesn't get talked about enough which 
you know, unfortunately in football, a lot of the defenders don't get talked about or the goalkeepers. Um, it's just, I don't know why that is. Um, we always speak about the goal scorers or the creators, but yeah, she's been one of our most consistent defenders throughout many years now. And I'm just glad she's getting to 50. You know, she's come into the Welsh camp quite late on compared to some of us and she fully deserves this. 50 caps. The centre back or full back, she seems to be one of those players who she's a minimum of 7 out of 10 every single time she plays. Exactly, and that's why she's on the team sheet. Um, you know, she's probably one of the first players on the team sheet because of that reason. She's She can play either position, she could probably play hold and mid as well if, if needed. Um, but yeah, great person to have on camp. She's a, a great girl, and we all get on with her. Um, and yeah, we're just really happy that she's going to get that achievement. And obviously she plays in the same position as her, but with her role in the squad as one of the more senior players, she kind of really has filled the filled the void left by Laurie. Yeah, definitely. Um, they're quite similar players, I would say, as well. They, you know, they both get stuck in. Like you said, they're always going to give you a 7 or 8 out of 10 um, consistency. They work hard. They're up and down the pitch. They're fit. You know, they keep themselves fit as well. They, they've never really had any injuries, either of them. So that's a really good sign for us. And obviously with Ang Harrod, to reach 100 caps, age 28, just seems just absolutely ludicrous. Yeah, it's insane. Um, obviously, she's one of my best mates and I'm so proud of her. Like her dad was here yesterday with her little brother having a little kick about and her brother, you can see, just idolises her. And, you know, we all do as well. She's, like you said, 28 to reach 100 caps. I think she's probably missed one or two games in her Welsh senior career, which is insane as well. Do you think she fl she's underrated is too strong a word? Do you think she flies a bit under the radar because she's she's quite shy because she's a defensive midfielder or you know a combative midfielder? She's not in the glory role of a number ten or a striker. Yeah, similar to Raza, I would say. Um, again, because she's defensive, um, people don't speak about it, but she does all the gritty stuff that people don't maybe see um, from the outside. Um, she she keeps the the team together and breaks up play very well and then plays forward passes to the likes of Jess, Tash, Kay, etc. She's also obviously, in terms of her personality, how she fits in the squad, she see, I mean, one, you guys all seem to absolutely adore her, but she's also, because of the age she is, I guess she almost bridges that gap between the senior players and, and some of the younger ones coming through. Yeah, I think she's obviously been around for so long, you, you expect her to be a lot older than she is, but yeah, she speaks to everyone, um, gets on with all the, the younger players as such, and just another person that you want in your team, you want to have her around camp, and she's slyly funny. You don't, you don't realise until you actually are really close to her, she's a very funny character. And just final one for me, good to have her back in the WSL because obviously want as many competitive teams challenging for the title as possible. And Harry and Amy both going to Spurs, hopefully will strengthen them and it's another kind of contender. Yeah, definitely. It's great to have her back. Um, like I said, it's going to be more competitive this year again and it's great for her as well to go to a club like Spurs. Um, I think she's only going to improve her. Brilliant. Thank you, Sophie. Best Any more questions for yourself? I'll just ask one if I can. Um, <coughs> you've obviously been part of sides in the past that have just fallen short of qualification. Yeah. I just wonder what you think is sort of the difference between that and maybe just doing enough to, to get over the line. Um, that's a tricky question. I think there's a lot of elements that come into place with that. Um, probably mentality being the main one. I think when we've fallen short in the past, we were a bit naive maybe. Um, we were obviously younger, we weren't as experienced, whereas now this team has been together for each campaign consistently, um, especially the more senior players. And I think it's yeah, it's about mentality and believing that we can do it. I think in the past we said we believed, but did we really as a whole? Whereas I think now the, the full squad believes that we can compete against the top teams. And I suppose when you get to this stage it's probably fine margins, isn't it? It's always fine margins, yeah. It comes down to, you know, Silly things, as you might think, set plays, you know, corners, defending them well. Can we score from corners? Um, it's not just about open play. It's about being disciplined in all those different areas. Thank you. I was just going to ask oh. one quick one. I, you've mentioned that over the last few years, y'all have, have done really well at going away to, pl to places, playing against teams that sit back deep with 11 players behind the ball and that kind of thing, and being the ones to grind out a win. Has it been nice being that team, that one that is actually the one sort of dictating the tempo, <laughs> being the one that gets to do it rather than being the one that's sitting back? Yeah, I, th I think we struggled in the past with that because we were never used to having the ball. We were probably the team that always sat back and defended and we were really good at defending. Um, but now the last you know, couple of years, we've 
we are getting more of the ball against certain teams and it, it is nice obviously that's my game I want to get on the ball I want to dictate play so and it's the same for a lot of the girls so it is nice to have more of the ball but we have to work on it then in training and it's about patterns of play it's about reading each other's triggers um, getting in, into the box in different ways do you think there were a little bit of growing pains going into that and do you think those growing pains have sort of gone away now and you are in a place where you feel very confident going into Greece yeah yeah definitely I do I think um, it shows in training um, over the last few days few months when we come in the, the way we play now is is different to the past um, a lot of the ball is on the floor which is nice uh, we're trying to link up play especially in the midfield we're trying to you know, dictate play in the middle to get our wide players on the ball and get our striker in scoring opp opportunities. And last off, I mean, proud of City ladies, they're trying to, you know, get back up to the championship. They've got a really big mission on. They're doing really well in the start. Have you spoken to them or have you said anything or gotten to see any of their, their good results? Uh, yeah, they've started really well. Obviously, Carol's the goalie. She's my best mate, so she tells me it all. But yeah, it's going really well. Um, hopefully they do get back up. Obviously, it's one of my first senior teams I played for. I want them to do well, um, but again, the game's con continuously growing, so they need to keep growing with the game as well. Is it true that she started, like, you were going to practice and Nora was just sort of sat there and then <laughs> they tried to get, like, kind of entice her and say, like, come on, come out, come on, try and do it, and then that's how she ended up getting into Yeah, it. she used to just come and watch me, and then I think one day someone was injured and they said, do you want to come training? And she, at first she was like, no, 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 and then obviously ended up coming. She was actually an outfield player to start with for yeah. Cardiff Reserves. As a defender, I think. I don't know if it was centre back or right back, and then ended up going in goal, probably because of her height. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Any more yeah. questions? Uh, yeah, obviously, it was a, a huge result in uh, Clean Ashley last night against Greece. Um, uh, you put in one of the best performances of the squad uh, or of the campaign so far in that game. Uh, I wonder if you think that you're favourites going into this one? Yeah, we should be favourites. I think um, we undersell ourselves if we say differently. Um, I think we are better than them on paper, but again, you know football and everyone loves an underdog and that's kind of what we were in the past. So we need to respect them and respect how they're playing, um, but also focus on us. Sure. And when I spoke with the, <coughs> the gaffer last, she said that this was the most exciting time to be in the women's game in Wales after the Euros, the spotlight that's, that's on the women's game now across the UK. Do you agree? Yeah, it's blown up, hasn't it, since the Euros, which is amazing. Um, probably even the ticket sales is probably a lot of it has come from the Euros that people have been able to watch those games, whether it be live in the stadium or on the telly. Um, a lot of girls now over our pre-season games at club, they've come and watched and their parents have said, oh, this is their first live game that they've come to watch because they've watched the Euros on the telly. So it's just little things because it's getting advertised more. It's in the public eye um, and now we've already sold nine and a half thousand tickets which is insane for us as Wales. And, and to play in front of nine and a half thousand people is that is that their nerves in, in any way shape or form or is it just about you know getting the, the, the fans behind you and uh, you know egging you on to, to, to the win? No it's not nerves it's pure excitement um, I remember the days when there'd be a hundred people in the crowd and they'd be our family and friends now we've got potentially nine and a half ten thousand come in to support us so it it's about enjoying that moment because we haven't had that in the past. Thanks everyone. Uh, we'll bring Fionn straight in now, okay? Thanks guys. Thanks so much. Thanks a lot. 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 Thanks